President Emerson Munangagwa's ruling Sano PF party has papadly plans to fast track a controversial law that would punish citizens deemed unpatriotic. The National Assembly last week adopted a motion calling for the crafting of the patriotic bill whose draft was accepted by the government in October 2020. The proposed law will criminalize and impose stiff penalties on private correspondents by what were termed as self-serving citizens with foreign governments or any officer or agent. Activists say the law is targeted at government critics and opposition leaders like the Citizens Coalition for Change CCC leader Nelson Chamisa and his deputy Tendai Biti, whom the government claims called for sanctions to be imposed on the country as the country heads towards the 2023 general elections. The government information stars were last week infuriated when journalist cum activist Hope Chingono addressed addressed a human rights summit in Geneva, Switzerland, where he detailed human rights abuses and failure to invest in public health in the country. The ruling party has now sponsored a shadowy pro-Munangagwa organization called Varakashi for ED to petition Attorney General Prince Machaya to compel him to expedite the drafting of the bill. As Varakashi for ED, we are outraged and concerned that in spite of the destructive effect of the sanctions to Zimbabwe being so obvious and so acknowledged by a majority of the international community, there are some Zimbabweans who have proved to be unpatriotic, malcontents, hell-bent on begging for the sanctions to stay on. The petition read, We therefore call upon you, Machaya's esteemed office, to do its part pronto and assist the government of Zimbabwe to enact the Patriotic Act, which should be equivalent of the United States of America's Logan Act, which in essence prohibits and criminalizes Zimbabwean citizens and residents from engaging in unauthorized foreign negotiations, parallel diplomacy, foreign lobbying, sanctions incitement, and foreign political and economic relations with countries in dispute with Zimbabwe or hostile to Zimbabwe. To give cred credence to the controversial bill, the Zano PF has been using former opposition members who have defected to the ruling party to come up with messages and videos apologizing to Zimbabweans for their role in opposition politics and begging for sanctions. These include the National Peace and Reconciliation Commission Commissioner Obed Kutu, the former MDC legislators Tongai Matutu and Gabriel Chaiva, who have frequently chimed out videos accusing the opposition of begging for the imposition of the sanctions in Zimbabwe. During debate on the motion to enact the bill in parliament last week, Umzingwane MP Levi Maishlome from the ZANU PF said calling for sanctions was a threat to national security. In my view, that is a security threat, and whichever way one looks at it, calling for sanctions is actually a threat to national security. There has to be legislation to against the threat to national security, he said. The ZANU-PF National Assembly Chief Whip Puporai Togaipi yesterday told the City Times that the bill would be brought before Parliament as soon as the processes by the executive were completed. There's been around 10 motions by MPs agitating for enactment of the Patriotic Act. The recent debate in Parliament was instigated by a petition by an organization called Zimbabwe Anti-Sanctions Trust. The motion was adopted and we expect Justice Minister Ziambi Ziambi to bring the bill as soon as possible, Togarepi has said. Observer said the motivation of the purpose of the proposed law was the desire to target opposition players. It is clear what the motive of that bill is and who the likely would be victims are. Any legislation that is intended to suppress freedom of speech is undemocratic and counterproductive, Ms. Tuseli Moyo, a political analyst, has said. It is clear that the bill is meant to curtail criticism of the authorities by opposition agents. Not liking or liking a regime has nothing to do with nationalism. 
a party in power and its attendant systems and practices are not the nation. Unfortunately, that distinction has been overlooked. Another political analyst, Efi Ngube, has said the whole intention is to close down the little that remains of the democratic space and silence dissenting voices in the run-up to the 2023 elections. The ZANU-PF is not assured of victory in a free and fair election where all voices are allowed space. Therefore, the patriotic bill is going to be used to undermine the ability of the opposition parties and civil society organizations to function. Political analyst Farai Magu also said Munangagu's administration risked to reverse the progress made since his ascendancy to power in November 2017. The bill in its current state has many gray areas that may result in it being misinterpreted and weaponized to stifle civic liberties and mutilate constitutional rights. It will be a huge dent to the new dispensation whose birth was welcomed as the beginning of a new chapter for human rights in Zimbabwe. First striking, it will create impressions that it's meant to further close civic space ahead of the 2023 elections. Magu 